Hello, and uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to present today. So we're the Cornell University team with the Crystal Parks use case. Okay, so this is our team right here. And the way we decided to work with our team was keeping design at the center of everything we did. And then the other sub teams like finance, distribution and development worked iteratively to innovate and optimize our solution. So just a, an agenda of what we're gonna do today, I'll be providing a quick summary and we'll be jumping into development, finance, a COVID section, and then we'll be opening it up to questions today. Uh, with that, I'd like to hand it over to Pam. Thanks, Samai. Going into the design process, we knew that we wanted to go beyond just producing the most electricity at the cheapest price possible. We also wanted to ensure that our project aligned with the goals of the developer in Crystal City. When we were researching, there were two quotes that really stood out to us. The first was from JBG Smith's website. It highlights their commitment to enhancing the fabric of neighborhoods by creating and strengthening the sense of place. It should feel like you are somewhere with distinct features and a strong character. The second quote was from Crystal City's sector plan, and it clearly states that they want solar to be used in artistic and creative ways. Financial feasibility is of course the governing concern, but putting these together, we constructed three guiding ideals for the project, enhancing the social fabric of the community, placemaking and artistic value. Throughout the tour of our system, you will be reminded of these ideals through their corresponding icons. We want to acknowledge and embrace that solar is more than just electricity generation. It can be fun, interesting, something we interact with, and a smart financial investment. With this in mind, Shivani will now introduce you to our proposed solar plus storage system. Thanks, Pam. So to provide an overview of the conceptual design, I will take you on a virtual tour of the nine proposed locations of installation. Our first stop is the southern parking lot where we come out to solar carports overhead. This can be beneficial for employees as their cars are protected from the direct sun during their work shift. With increasing population density, it was important to capitalize on any available space, especially for parking. The existing lot was upgraded to contain a carport of 48 parking spaces in two rows. It has an overhanging double louvered frame to double the number of fitted panels with the supplier only allowing a maximum tilt of 10 degrees. Cars would drive in a loop around the center carport to enter and exit. It. The same LG panels and SMA string inverters as those used on rooftops will be used to create a 135 kilowatt system for 167,000 kilowatt hours annually. For our second stop, we walk over to the new, nearby Solar Smart Flowers. They are an artistic piece and in coordination with the master plan, it counts as a landmark for people to recognize adding to the character of Crystal City as an intersection of urban and natural beauty. Next up, we examine the standalone solar power kiosk inserted to showcase the unique character of Crystal Parks. With the resulting increase in lo local workday density with the arrival of the Amazon headquarters, it would support local businesses with showing local listings. It would display some of JBG Smith's sustainability achievements, show the rooftop output tracking information, have a map of the solar installations, show transit info, and even flight times due to the incoming pedestrian bridge to Reagan National Airport. Finally, on our tour, we go up about 110 feet to the rooftop solar installations. Across five large commercial buildings, there are almost 4,000 panels. However, with flat roofs and general inaccessibility, it's not as easy for the community to celebrate it. One solution was the informational kiosk, and second, we wanted to take advantage of the close proximity of the Virginia Tech Innovation Campus to suggest possibly having organized tours that could inspire innovative youth to pursue this industry. It can also facilitate student interactions with the tech companies who are tenants of the buildings. As students ourselves, especially while working on the solar project, we strongly relate to this feeling of wanting to interact with the things we only get to read about and study. So we are excited about making this opportunity available to students. Rooftop solar was the vital piece of our optimization strategy due to its high cost and potential output. Therefore, we developed accurate models in Aurora Solar for each 300 kilowatt installation atop each building. We also developed shading models that would help indicate areas of low levels of irradiance and determine effects of key metrics such as tilt angle and row spacing. An additional great asset to optimization, especially for material selection, were decision matrices. The main takeaway from this panel matrix is that we opted for LG panels due to the high efficiency and low temperature loss coefficient, as well as their anti-reflective coating because of the proximity to an airport. To coordinate with the panels, we used rapid shutdown certified SMA tri-power core one string inverters for a balance of limiting points of failure and ease of maintenance. In coordination with the matrices, evaluating graphing system losses based on our models helped to determine key properties of materials as well as create a numerical result from our shading models to help determine metrics. We also consulted with industry to determine best standards. 
For example, from this loss report, we determined to utilize panels with a small temperature loss coefficient to minimize environmental losses and have panels with bypass diodes to assist with row to row shading. The solar PV system across all five buildings based on our models resulted in 1.75 gigawatt hours per year of energy production, which is a 4% offset from consumption. That concludes the proposed design, design tour. I will hand it off to Samai. Thanks, Shivani. So now that we have our design in place, we looked at ways to further innovate and monetize our system and storage was what came to mind. So now storage can serve various purposes, which includes peak load shaving, it can be ancillary services, frequency regulation, and of course, providing resilience for the buildings. So we ended up looking at two different approaches. One of them is modeling peak load shaving in a financial model, as well as a resilience model. So jumping into a financial model, uh, we, we model a one megawatt hour battery system for the Crystal Parks use case and putting in all the inputs, we ended up getting a net present value of a negative $139,000, which clearly shows that uh, it is currently unviable to incorporate storage in our design. And just to confirm our assumptions and these results, we ended up with the same, we ended up using the same inputs for a new uh, rate structure, but this time in Phoenix, Arizona with peak load shaving. And that ended up getting a net present value of positive 146,000. So currently that shows that the rate structure may not be viable right now, but given Virginia's renewable portfolio standards that could change in the future. So now that we had that out of the question, we ended up getting a resilience model, which meant we had to model different sorts of blackouts and we had to model uh, how the system can operate emergency lights and elevators for about two hours. So we determined that we would need about a 0.75% critical load just to power these lights and elevators and using Reop light and PV SAM, we ended up getting uh, a system that can supply emergency load 93% of the time with a 112 kilowatt hour battery system. And uh, this, of course, provided annual savings of about $2,600 under the rate structure because the rate structure, although it does have some amounts of peak load shaving, as you can see on the right here, where the chart cycles take advantage of the peak, of, uh, peak load shaving to an extent. And of course, because the building peaks in the day, the PV does part of the peak load shaving. So now that we have our resilience model, I'd like to hand it now to uh, James to talk about distribution. Thanks, Samai. For our distribution process, we first worked with OpenDSS to get used to the software, and then we implemented our proposed design into the model provided by NREL. And once that was finished, we used OpenDSS to identify how our system will impact the grid. And finally, we used the results from our analysis to determine whether or not the addition of our system was feasible and what changes, if any, would need to be made to the grid. And so while implementing our design in OpenDSS, we were limited to only four of the five JBG Smith buildings in the model. And so we connected two rooftop systems to one bus so that we could include all five systems. This dual connection ensures that our model represents the design as ideally as possible by including all elements of our proposal. And then co continuing on with grid impact analysis, we noticed that before you add the solar and batteries, the voltage in the grid decreases as you get further from the substation. However, once we added our proposed design, the voltage increased with distance. And this increase in voltage, while not causing overloads, could cause excess wear on parts of the grid like transformers over time. And in the end, we concluded that the nine proposed solar installations are feasible. And this was determined by looking at the voltage throughout the local grid, which is the blue line in this plot, and as you can see, it's maintained within the mandated limits, which are the red lines. And also OpenDSS reported no overloads. So all in all, the grid had no issues with the addition of the proposed design. And now I'll hand it back to Pam. Thanks, James. For this project, we took into account Arlington County's major codes and documents to assure that we're meeting all requirements. This can be split up into four main categories, zoning, fire, electrical, and construction codes. Regarding zoning, the location is a fairly standard and flexible mixed-use district labeled C01.5. Per Arlington County zoning ordinances, the modifications we are talking about would be approved on a case-by-case -case basis and through the permitting process. We are not going through a rezoning process. Next are the fire codes, which are delegated by the 2015 Virginia Statewide Fire Prevention Codes, and the system itself must also be approved by the fire chief. A notable code requires that the roofs have four foot walkways. And as you can see in this diagram of one of our rooftop solar systems, it was designed with this requirement in mind. 
Third are electrical codes, which are found in the National File Protection Association, NFPA 70, and dictate general safety standards, signage, and labeling requirements. Finally, we look to the 2015 Virginia Construction Codes to see the requirements dictating how the panel should be installed and, how, and the important in, uh, considerations for our construction process and timeline. This project will require 15 permits. Five of these are commercial build, building permits, one for, the, one for the rooftop solar on each building. The next nine are electrical permits, one for each location where we are installing electrical equipment. Finally, the project will require one land disturbance permit for our installation and the 10-foot space around the area during the construction process. The local government agencies we'll be working with include the Arlington County Inspection Service Department, Zoning Board, and Department of Environmental Analysis. The permit fees will total a little over $6,000, and the overall process, which includes both approval and construction, is expected to take between seven months and a year. Now I will hand it over to Mike to discuss the financial analysis. Thank you, Pam. So we'll jump right into the financial structure before laying out JBG Smith's options. So we're assuming a tax efficient cash flows through third party tax equity investor using a 26% investment tax credit rate or ITC. The project's levelized cost of energy or LCOE is just under $130 per megawatt hour with an IRR or internal rate of return of 8.1%, so your standard partnership flip model. Total bill comes out to $1.9 million and early losses are offset by stable future cash flows. This is similar to a fixed income debt security or a bond that you may be familiar with. Our cost breakdown is competitive at $1.25 per watt compared to the national average for commercial industrial solar. Uh, this is controlling for a $0 developer margin, which is why the numbers on the right might look a little lower than, than you're uh, familiar with. We uh, do pay a premium on balance of system and labor because it's a complex five building project and there's a high local prevailing wage in the district. Additionally, it's, it's important to note that costs can drop as low as $1.14 per watt without the community engagement or battery system providing optionality during a, a cost sensitive environment or time like, like now. Next, we're gonna compare an off-take agreement using a PPA before we get into an ownership model. So a 20 year PPA price at $130 per megawatt hour offers $1.5 million in energy savings over that lifetime. I won't go through the full model on the right, but key takeaway is the developer, us, as Cornell, coordinates the project in the off-take agreement and will sell the project to a third party asset owner. So while JBG Smith is saving money on energy, they're potentially losing value by paying a fixed rate to that asset owner which brings us to the ownership model for JBG Smith. The LCO, LCOE is unchanged, but JBG now owns the asset and consumes the energy. They'll earn $1.7 million in savings over 30 years and achieve that 8.1% IRR. The obvious downside is high capital expenditure, but ownership allows future optionality of revenue streams, which could be significant given Virginia's recent 100% renewable portfolio standard commitment. Now, we know right now your most pressing concern for your business uh, is probably not solar, considering uh, COVID-19. And we think it's important to understand that COVID does pose significant risk to the project. Lack of tax equity and construction timeline uncertainty can certainly dry up the drive up the cost of energy, but current safe harbor provisions allow you to lock in the 26% ITC until the end of 2023, as long as we have a 5% total expenditure for the project by the, the, this year's end. Given this info, we created a hybrid ownership offtake model that will maximize your investment and minimize your, your upfront costs. So using this hybrid model, JBG Smith would invest as the tax equity partner with just over a half million dollars in taxable income by 2023. The developer and sponsor would contribute the remainder of the capital stack. Now, obviously JBG's full investment is not due this year, but investment of 96,000 by the end of the year, will lock in a 26% ITC through safe harbor provisions. While this is only a small percentage of JBG's taxable income, if losses or cash flow do become an issue due to COVID-19, the developer uh, and sponsor may be able to ensure safe harbor by purchasing some of the, the solar panels specifically themselves, which are selling at uh, about a 5% discount due to the pandemic. This recommendation ensures a competitive a levelized cost of energy, as well as a project with an attractive IRR for JBG Smith while minimizing that initial capex. It also provides the most optionality as you may choose to sell your equity stakes or purchase full ownership in the future. So next, uh, the next steps would to be make a, an investment decision. 
um, whether that's a PPA ownership or this hybrid model as a tax equity and, uh, advisor. Our, our team will help connect you to the various stakeholders uh, to, get, uh, to bring some solar to, to the Crystal Parks District. Now we'll move on to questions. Uh, oh, just at the moment, the, the clock struck. <laughs> Excellent timing. Uh, 